my segment of the presentation is called online presence versus present online. See, everyone is online, everyone's present online, but very few have online presence. So we're gonna dive deep into the nine different major networks, the social networks, what their niche is, and how to truly capture business from them with the correct approach versus the approach that so many people take today, which is the wrong approach, the techie side of it, instead of the human side of it. So I can't wait. Absolutely, guys, if you're in real estate, if you're thinking about going into real estate, this is an absolute must attend event. Must. We'll see you there. Welcome to the show. My name is Jeremy Poole and I'm the host of The Moment on Real Estate Social, where we explore and celebrate the necessary transformational process one must go through to achieve a high level of success. Today we have the great pleasure of hanging out with Tony Giordano. Tony is the president and founder of Opulate Agency in Beverly Hills. Tony, welcome on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Um, Tony, as you know, the show is called The Moment. What would you consider or characterize as being your defining moment that allowed you to springboard from where you were to where you are today? Wow. Um, so we're starting that way. We're starting that we're, way. We're starting, we're starting off there. We're going deep. Um, you know, a lot of people would probably think something positive um, or the first... Uh, real launch of their success. For me, it's a little different. If I was to just think of a moment that changed everything was the moment I lost everything. Mm. So in 2008, just four years later, I literally lost everything in the economic crash wow. of the United States and the banking crisis. And my moment for the year, or the 18 months that I went through that crash in a horrible way and many other things that happened. All my properties were gone, my possessions. How many? Uh, I lost over a dozen properties. Jeez. I had to lay off staff. I had boats repossessed. All my cars were repossessed. Boats. Boats. <laughs> Plural. Wow. Uh, yeah, those were the days. I had to sell watches and paintings for 10 cents on the dollar to pay oh rent. Went through a massive divorce in 06. Oh Youngest God. son is diagnosed with autism in 08. And it was just, it was really redefining me and I kept positive and it was summer of 2009 and I was so fed up with not figuring out how I was going to dig out of the crash and it wasn't getting any better that I remember just being in this little bathroom in my apartment and you know those pedestal sinks? Yeah. I remember I had just lost two transactions again to not being able to be approved and behind on my rent and I just remember looking in the mirror and I grabbed the pedestal sink out of anger and I just remember just shifting my body weight and it ripped off the wall I slipped fell the medicine cabinet mirror fell off the wall hit the ground shattered and I just remembered sitting there and the one thing I could see was a piece of the mirror with my reflection in it Wow and I remember seeing my face and I was like that was your moment, Tony. Get up. Like, you got to do your little pout, but this is not gonna go well if you don't just get up and, and shift this. And so that was the moment that I got back up and I just said, I gotta change this course and I gotta figure out how to dig out of this crash and then there's plenty of moments that have happened since. But if it wasn't for that, I don't think I ever would have really had the fuel to redefine myself. And my mom always said, you know, don't ever give up. That's the difference between failure and success is quitting. So That's an incredible story. I had no idea. Yeah, it was my moment. And it's funny you call it the moment yeah. because I always say even when I'm on stage, that was my moment. Jeez. Like, I, I was starting to think that you never had a moment. Yeah, no, that, that was my moment. There's been some other ones, but I, I think that that's the one that I always default to. Jeez. Okay, so you got into lending. You crushed it, had this big upswing, and then the market crashed. This image, this this status, this facade, this guy, that I'd imagine you were probably the envy, right? You're handsome, you're successful, yeah. you have the boats, <laughs> you have yeah. the cars, you have the hounds. Was that a slow process? Was that just like crushing down all at once? It was crushing down all at once. It did not happen slow. I my as a lender, I mostly did super high end mm. jumbo financing, meaning celebrity. $10 million house, $5 million down payment, $5 million loan. Jeez. Um, pro athletes. 
And so when the market was tanking, jumbo financing went out the door yeah. first. Yep. And all of the easy financing went out the door and stated income and, wow. and then Lehman Brothers crashing, Bear Stearns crashing, the stock market crashing 900 points, all the banks closing their wholesale division. So it turned off drastically and then add a divorce and and other things that were happening right. in my life and it was like that and I, I remember just what just happened wow. how did it happen this fast but I was over leveraged on everything Jeez. you know over leveraged on property over leveraged on toys and material things that all had loans on them Wow so from that from that moment that you're laying there on the ground pouting thinking why me and you saw your reflection and that broken mare, what happened to you on the inside? How are you different? It just, I think it, that was the reality check moment. The, the ease, it, you know what, in all honesty, it was the moment of realizing you haven't done anything yet. You know, That's good. You, you took advantage of an easy economy that after September 11th, which changed me as a person in general, hmm. Um, especially as a reserve firefighter myself, September 11th was really the, I think the day I turned into a man per se. Okay. But that fake housing market that started after September 11th and mm. the big short that we all know is the Hollywood movie, um, from 01 to 07, it was so easy to make money and, sure. and give somebody a home loan and to buy a house that I didn't earn it. Right. Like it was, anybody could have done it. Yeah. And so I think that was the moment where you haven't even proven yourself. I absolutely love this conversation right now. Yeah. You are the first person to say this on camera. Uh, oh, wow. Well. I'm very transparent. <laughs> I say it on stage all the time. Like, I 100% agree with that. 100%. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. And so that was like, you haven't proven anything and you haven't even proven anything to your sons besides you're a good father, mm. but you haven't had obstacle. You haven't had adversity. You had it maybe growing up, but this is your moment. So you either can pout and woe is me and why did this happen to me mm -hmm. or get up right wipe the dust off yep and it's it's round five now go and for it this is going to be a long battle but you're going to need to get you need to, you're going to need to keep getting back up tony yep and you will keep getting knocked down get knocked down every month bounce back up yeah love that love that so tony you've branded yourself as a social agent tell us about that you know, it's funny you ask me that question because I get asked it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I never had the intention of branding myself the social agent like when I wrote the book. Sure. The intention behind the social agent was that my passion is teaching and I was trying to teach people to be a social agent. Whether mm -hmm. they're a real estate agent, an insurance agent, or a salesperson, that I'm trying to help you know what it is, first of all, right. and to be one yourself. And when I wrote the book, I didn't even know I was going to be writing a book is I was sitting at an event that I was speaking at, and the speaker that came on after me was somebody who teaches people how to write a book and like kind of follow his plan sure. to, to get it done. And I was sitting there, and I've always said that my most, uh, my highest level fuel is when people tell me I can't. Mm -hmm. Like just me tell me I can't. Yeah. And I'm sitting there in this, this business person that I don't really like was sitting by me <laughs> and he used to doubt me. Like he doubted yeah. that I could take the market share from him, which I did. Perfect. And so we're sitting at this event together and we're kind of friends in a way. And I was like, I can write a book. And then he goes, you're not going to write a book. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to write a book. Yep. I mean, I'm going to just follow his plan. He's yeah. like, you can't write a book. And I'm like, what did you say? <laughs> I go, what else have you said I can't do that yeah. I did? And he goes, you can't, maybe you'll write the book, but you'll never publish it. And I'm yeah. like, thank you. So I go back and I write that book throughout 2011 and it releases in 2012. So then it was, well, you can't, you, you won't become a bestseller. Okay, thank you. And so the reason I came up with the social agent to begin with is the gentleman on stage, he goes, before you even start writing a book, you need to know what the name of the book is going to be. Mm. That was his opinion. Mm -hmm. So I was like, the social agent. It just right when he said it, it just came to you and then he goes and then make sure that the book title isn't taken so he goes so go on like go daddy and look for a domain see if your domain is available and then also go on amazon and look at other books so i'm doing it right there as he's talking and the domain isn't taken. he goes and if the domain's not taken buy it so i bought it yeah 20 bucks and then he goes go on amazon there was another book called the social agent which was a cia mm written book years ago. Yeah. He goes, and it's okay if there's another book with the title as long as it's not in the same field. Yep. 
So then it was off and running. And That's wonderful. I wrote The Social Agent to teach people the power of this new world of social networking and our online identity. Beautiful. So talk to me about some of the differences between a non-social agent and an actual social agent. That has to be elaborate, but what is the biggest difference? How does a social agent behave differently? Just because two people sell insurance doesn't mean they, they've been classified as a great agent. Yeah. 99% of salespeople are present mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. but a fraction of us have what I call online presence. And so online presence versus present online is the definition of what a true social agent would be. I couldn't agree more. Online presence is having relevance. It's saying and doing things that not everyone else are doing, mm -hmm. and it's actually having an audience that truly feels value in their connection with you online. Yes. And that would be the defining difference of what a social agent really would be. Love it. In your opinion, is that something that anybody can do, or do you have to have a certain kind of personality, charisma? Great question. Um, I think that anybody can do anything. Okay. Um, we've all heard it. You know, some people think it's cheesy, but mm -hmm. you can do anything that you set your mind to. I don't put a limiting belief on anyone. Does it come more naturally to people? Sure, mm -hmm. sales comes more naturally to people. Will some other people have to work harder to achieve it? Sure. Mm -hmm. But what I always try to do is simplify it. And all I say in my book is the same reason your friends and family love you, hopefully they do, uh, <laughs> is how you're going to get 5,000 other people to love yeah, you. Yeah. Is being yourself online and then every now and then reminding them what you do. Yeah. And I think that when you put it that way, then anyone can achieve it regardless if it comes naturally or not. That's it, that's it. I couldn't agree more. And I think the one thing that I did differently, that we did differently as a company, was be really authentic and organic and true to ourselves. And what we found was people were attracted to that. So in your case, just being completely you, after being, I, I call it being naked, laying there on the ground, staring at your reflection, I feel at that point. How'd you know I was naked? <laughs> I don't know. You I don't know. <laughs> that makes the imagery so much better. <laughs> I feel like at that point you really discover who you really are. And yeah. you either like that person or you don't. True. But if you do like that person and you show that person to the world and just be fearless about it, I have a, uh, a, a firm belief that everybody has a seed of greatness within them. But you got to be true to yourself if that's ever going to come out. Yeah, without question. Yeah. How has social media changed your ability to generate business? Every, every way. Um, social media, I actually don't like the, the words social media because it has this, I think, connection to negativity or people feeling like they've gone to a social media class and all social media classes must teach the same thing, right. and so they're present online, like I'm saying, yep. thinking that that was what the class was supposed to be. And social media is not a fad, it's not no. for kids, it's not the way it started. Social media has become the number one way on the internet that people communicate, not nationally, yes. globally. globally. So this world of social media is online presence and it's staying in touch with people. So what social media, had had done for my business is when I started meeting people. The number one rule of sales is has always been go where the people are. Mm -hmm. Prospecting, lead generation, whatever it is, go where the people are. Mm -hmm. And where are people today? Online. And so I decided instead of door click instead of door knocking, I was going to be door clicking. I like instead that. Instead of forcing my direct mailer into somebody's mailbox and not knowing if they grabbed it or threw it in the, the trash, mm -hmm. was going to force my direct mailer into the news feed of multiple networks and now I know who saw it, and I know how old they are, what interest they have, how many people liked it, watched it, tagged it, viewed it, shared it, commented on it, and could reach out to these people. And so I was, I was using social media as my modern day neighborhood, Absolutely. modern day chamber event, modern day charity event, yes. to build relationships with people. But so many people have this wall. Right. And so when I really saw this like light bulb click, I then realized I'm going to use it this way and within 30 days had a five million dollar listing that I got from Facebook from some random person who I had added but it wasn't that I just added her that got it it yeah. was the fact that we built a relationship in yes. such a short period of time yes 
that that's what made her want to refer her wow. family to me. Wow. 100%, Facebook allows you to stay relevant to a much larger population and it allows you to do it in a way that's strategic. So, absolutely. My segment of the presentation is called Online Presence versus Present Online. See, everyone is online, everyone's present online, but very few have online presence. So we're gonna dive deep into the nine different major networks, the social networks, what their niche is, and how to truly capture business from them with the correct approach versus the approach that so many people take today, which is the wrong approach, the techie side of it, instead of the human side of it. So I can't wait. Absolutely. Guys, if you're in real estate, if you're thinking about going into real estate, this is an absolute must-attend event. Must. We'll see you there. Yeah.